Hello everyone. The topic of this mini lecture screencast is parenting styles and socio-emotional development in childhood. Within the socio-emotional domain of development in childhood, we will be focusing on Diana Baumrein's research on parenting styles, as well as the specific outcomes in children that are associated with those styles. We're also going to discuss the role of culture in shaping children as well as some additional factors. Here I invite you to consider the general context of uh, where uh, the general context in which this is taking place, specifically in terms of Eric Erickson's theory of psychosocial development. Here we're talking about early and middle childhood and within that uh, we will would be focusing on Erickson's two stages. One, the uh, stage of uh, initiative versus guilt, where children learn to risk and fail, and then subsequently in industry versus inferiority, they learn to uh, several skills and how to work with others. So you can see how this fits into the context of parenting styles and how they can influence the outcome of those stages in Erickson's theory. So just a little context there. As we go through this mini lecture, I also invite you to keep a couple of questions in mind. One, what are some of the ways in which parenting styles differ in your opinion? According to your own experience, either as a child of somebody else, which I assume you are, or as a parent yourself, how is it that different uh, people parent? How is, how is it that their approaches differ? And two, which of those ways do you think are most influential in how the child will turn out, how they will develop? So keep those questions in mind. Diana Baumrind was a clinical and developmental psychologist who conducted studies in mostly preschool children in the 60s and 70s uh, using a variety of research methods including naturalistic and laboratory observations as well as parental interviews. Uh, she also followed up some of those children longitudinally at ages 9 and 15 I believe uh, with some of the same results. So what was she looking for? What was she looking at when she observed these children interacting with their parents? She was looking for approaches to parenting and she was looking to systematically document dimensions along which parents differ in terms of how they choose to parent their children. And so she uh, succeeded in doing just that and identified two main dimensions along which parents differ. One is this dimension of responsiveness which is about warmth or engagement with children, and two, demandingness or the level of control that parents exert over their children. According to Baumrein's research, the majority of parents displayed one of three parenting styles, although later research by other investigators added a fourth parenting style. So four parenting styles result from combining the two dimensions of warmth and responsiveness versus control and demandingness. Now you may ask, uh, excuse me, how is it that we can fit somebody's entire parenting approach into four literal boxes? Well, uh, great point, great question. I simply invite you to take this as a reference point or a starting point if you're a skeptic, uh, but really know that subsequent research since the 60s and 70s and Baumrein's work has largely validated or supported her initial findings. So there's a lot of, of support for this research, albeit admittedly this is a little bit constricting, I think. So. Um, the dimension of responsiveness, uh, which is about warmth and engagement, as I mentioned, um, means that parents differ in how emotionally warm, close, caring, involved, and responsive to the needs and development of their child uh, they are. Also, along, I'm looking at my notes here, the dimension of demandingness or control Parents may be very demanding, maintaining tight control over all aspects of their child's life, or they be, may be more lax, right? So strict versus lax, as well as warm versus cold. So let's look at how uh, these two dimensions combined result in four specific parenting styles. 
We'll start with the authoritative parenting style and pay attention here to the suffix, authoritative. Here, um, the author authoritative parenting style combines a moderate uh, degree of control, maybe even high uh, degree of control, with uh, a, a high level of warmth and responsiveness. And who are these parents? These are parents who are firm but caring. They explain rules and they encourage discussion. So they're considered to be just right, at least for Western standards, and that's an important point. On the other hand, here, permissive indulgent parenting provides high warmth, yes, but with little control. Indulgent parents use little punishment and they usually simply accept their child's behavior. They're more of a friend rather than a parent. Moving along, combining uh, low warmth and high control, we have authoritari authoritarian parents. Excuse me. These are rigid, controlling, or considered too hard parents, at least for Western styles. They are the because I said so parents, or the my way or the highway types of parents. Um, they, uh, there's little give and take in this parenting styles. Parents do not explain their decisions. They value hard work, respect, and obedience. They are dictatorial parents, in essence. Finally, the fourth parenting style, permissive neglectful, or some, uh, some label it uninvolved parenting, involves little warmth or control. They're indifferent, unconcerned parents who provide mainly for the child's basic physical needs. They spend minimal time with their children and uh, minimize their uh, contact accordingly. One important note here is that these parenting styles are about outward behaviors exhibited by the parents. They are not about the parents' internal feelings or emotions. So what really matters is what the child gets to see rather than what the parent is internally feeling, which may or may not agree with what they express outwardly. So keep that in mind. Parenting styles vary across cultures. Families function, influence, and are influenced within Bronfenbrenner's different systems, if you'll recall, ranging from the micro to the macro. So they are within a context of the family, the community, the culture, etc. Uh, European or Caucasian American parents usually, according to research, tend to be uh, more warm and exert moderate amounts uh, or levels of control. They also value individualism, independence, self-reliance. On the other hand, Asian and Latino parents tend, or at least like Latin American ones, tend to value uh, cooperation and collaboration. Uh, Chinese parents, in particular, value emotional restraint and family harmony, more in line with a collectivist rather than individualistic culture, so thereby express less warmth. Note that authoritarian parenting may work better for Asian cultures than for Western cultures, and we're going to uh, see that, explore that point a bit more in a minute. So Latino parents um, stress family ties, respect for family roles, and are thereby protective and uh, exert uh, a, a good level of control. While uh, parenting uh, styles may be influential, it is important to note that a recent study by the Pew Research Center indicated that more than parenting styles, uh, socioeconomic status may be the more influential factor. That is, um, low socioeconomic status families in particular uh, may uh, in, endure stress due to low income, lesser education, and or a need to protect children from danger. So these may end up being more influential than particular uh, child rearing philosophies. So how influential are parents really? Well, parents are not all powerful uh, in shaping the, their children, despite some older theories, but they do exert a level of influence, even if we take into account Bronfenbrenner's multiple systems. Therefore, specific outcomes associated with each parenting style have been identified. 
children of authoritative parents tend to be more responsible, self-reliant, and friendly. Uh, they exhibit emotional stability, adaptive patterns of coping, and uh, greater life satisfaction. A concrete manifestation of this is that they usually tend to earn better grades and get along better with their peers. On the other hand, children of permissive indulgent parents are often impulsive and easily frustrated. They exer ex exhibit little self-control, are self-centered, and tend to clash with authority. Children of authoritarian parents tend to have lower self-esteem, lack autonomy and identity, autonomy and or identity, and are less skilled socially. They tend to exhibit lower school achievement, more aggression, and depression. So uh, authoritarian parenting has been associated with poor academic achievements and depressive symptoms. Finally, on the permissive neglectful parenting style, there, it has been associated with poor self-control, low self-esteem, and aggression as well. Some important points to keep in mind is that, one, the nature of this research is correlational rather than experimental. Therefore, this is about patterns rather than individuals and associations rather than causations necessarily. For obvious ethical reasons, we could not conduct such experiments comparing a specific parenting approach to another and uh, analyzing the outcomes in children. So that is one limitation of this type of study. Uh, another one is what we already discussed to some degree, which is the role of socioeconomic status, income, education, etc., as well as that of culture. Uh, specifically, Baum Ryan's findings appear to hold true across ethnicity and social class. However, there are exceptions. For example, several studies of low income African American parents have not found negative uh, effects associated with the authoritarian style of parenting. Same thing for Asian parents. So, those caveats there. Also, there are other factors, for example, the parents' relationship with each other. Uh, for example, ha the harmful effects of chronic parental conflict uh, diverts parents' attention from high-quality parenting. Parents need to be united as a team and respect uh, and support their individual differences in terms of how they uniquely parent. And on that note, students often ask me in class, uh, how about two different styles of parenting within the same family? right? Say mom and dad or mom and mom, dad and dad have different styles of parenting. Well, research shows that teens at least uh, are generally better off having at least one authoritative parent. Um, there's also the effect of divorce on children. As we know, this is more impactful uh, on teenagers rather than say preschoolers or college age children. And um, that uh, children who are temperamental temperamentally emotional tend to be hit the hardest uh, by divorce. Um, there's also evidence of intergenerational transmission of parenting behavior. This is another question that students often ask me. Um, and they've noticed that um, either they tend to parent how they were parented or they've seen this in other people. And there's evidence for that as well. So we transmit our styles through generations. Again, overall patterns doesn't mean that they apply to all individuals. There's the reciprocal influence uh, of children. That is, parents do not parent on, in a vacuum. Children also influence how their parents uh, parent them. And we see this oftentimes parents becoming more lax, uh, so exerting lower levels of control with subsequent children. They may be very strict to begin with, but they kind of let go a little bit as uh, children, as they have more children or also as children age. So for example, Adolescents desire more autonomy or demand more autonomy and input into decision making and um, also temperamentally active or disagreeable children may require greater parental control. So children also influence how parents uh, uh, approach their own parenting. And could these also mirror teaching styles? What do you think? This is a question I've thought about myself. So. I invite you guys to think about which parenting style your parents or caretakers implemented 
if you feel comfortable. I know that sometimes this may be a sensitive topic for some individuals. And how do you think this affected your own socio-emotional and or cognitive development? Some things to think about, you may want to pause the video or think about them later. Finally, some learning objectives. Uh, sorry, I should close my Zoom window here. Are um, that you should be able, at the end of this mini lecture screencast, compare and contrast different parenting styles, authoritative, authoritarian, permissive, indulgent, and evaluate their impact on children's development, and explain the role of parents' relationships, the reciprocal influence of children, culture, and socioeconomic status on children's developmental outcomes. That's it for now, everybody. Catch you on the next mini lecture.